it is time we slowly start getting into penetration testing process. For now, we didn't yet perform any hacking, but we are getting there. It is important we get the basics first and that we know why we do everything. And trust me, later in the course, we will be doing some serious stuff and everything will make sense because we covered all the basics first and we didn't just jump into something without any preparation. So in this video, we will be briefly talking about stages of penetration test. How does it go? In which order do we perform the steps? And which steps are crucial? For now on, we got our virtual lab set up. We installed Kali Linux and all the tools that hackers use are now available for us in our machine. We also performed some configuration to it to get it full screen as well as performed setup for internet connection. From now, the basic steps that we are going to do is we will use our Kali Linux machine to scan and attack different machines, networks, websites and accounts. But how are we going to do that? Do we just magically attack it? And do we just install virus on their machine somehow? And if so, how do we do that? What about Trojans, password cracking or phishing? Is that what we do? Well, that is just a small portion of a penetration test. First thing and most important thing before we even start a penetration test on a target is to figure out do we have permission to attack this target? This is very important since you don't want to be attacking machines or target networks that you do not have permission to attack. It could be that client told me to only test one machine on the network and not the entire network. Therefore, I'm only allowed to test that one machine. Or it could be that our client has multiple networks and they only allowed us to test one of them. That means you should not go around and try to hack different machines on a different network. Now, these are only some of the examples, but what's important to get out of this is that always have permission to perform a penetration test. Trying to hack or hacking something that you are not allowed to hack could potentially get you into some serious trouble if you get caught. Now that we got that out of the way, let us finally talk about different stages of penetration testing. We already know that there are five of them and the first one is reconnaissance or information gathering. Now, reconnaissance is the act of gathering information about your target to better plan out your attack. And this step of penetration testing is the only one that you can perform on any website or target that you want, since gathering information about something is not illegal. There are two ways that we can go about doing information gathering actively by directly interacting with our target, or it can be done passively without interacting with the target. A simple example of this would be, let's say you want to gather information for Facebook and you would do it actively by visiting Facebook page and getting all the information that you can from the Facebook page itself, while passively it would be if you went to some other website that talks about Facebook and you get information about Facebook from that other website. This would mean you never interacted with Facebook, therefore you performed a passive information gathering. After this step comes scanning. Here is where you can start getting in trouble if you do it without permission. Scanning is a deeper form of information gathering using technical tools to find openings in the target and in the systems that you're attacking. These openings can be gateways, open ports, operating systems that the target runs, and so on and so on. In this step, we also perform vulnerability scanning, which is just searching for vulnerable software in the target system or network that could possibly be exploited. After information gathering and scanning comes third step, which is gaining access, or so-called exploitation. And this is the step where we actually hack the target. We use information that we gathered in phase one and phase two take control of any number of target devices. Gaining access of target devices allows us to steal data from their system or to use those devices to attack other devices on the same network. Usually, after this step, you can consider penetration tests to be successful since you manage to gain access to a target system. 
However, this is not the last step of a penetration test. After exploitation comes maintaining access. This step with the fifth step is sometimes optional. You might not need to always perform last two steps since client might only care whether their system is penetrable. Therefore, you prove them it is after the third step. If there was a vulnerability, of course. However, maintaining access is also important step and it is commonly done by installing backdoors and planting rootkits. What a backdoor and rootkits are, are simply programs that will allow us to gain access to that target whenever we want, without the need to exploit it again. We just connect to the backdoor that we planted in the target system and there it is, we are again on their machine. And last step of penetration test is covering tracks. Covering tracks is simply removing all evidence that an attack ever took place. This can involve deleting or hiding files, editing logs, or basically reverting any changes that you did to the system while the attack took place. Okay, so these five steps are entire process of a penetration test, and we're going to cover them in great detail throughout our course. Keep in mind that these steps should be performed in order. And one more important thing is, in case you're a beginner, you might think that third step, which is exploitation or gaining access, is the most important step of the process. Even though it is very important and crucial, the most important steps are actually information gathering and scanning. It is in these two steps that we gather information about the target and discover vulnerabilities so if you're not that good in gathering information, you might miss some things that could be used to gain access to the machine, therefore preventing you to find an actual vulnerability. So just keep that in mind, that information gathering is 70% of work. Okay, good, so we talked a little about these phases, but before we get to perform each one of these steps, we must first get a little familiar with our Linux machine. So in the next few lectures, we're going to get into details about Terminal and some of the commands we can run and execute with it. See you there.